All right, everybody. Hello and welcome to definitely the first time we've started recording episode 22 or 23 or whatever this is of Grim Scenarios. I'm so bad at Alex right now and he's just like sitting there laughing. She's pretty bad at me, everybody. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, as I was explaining the last time we tried to record this episode, which was about 15 minutes ago, we forgot to be prepared this week. We just literally were not prepared. We hadn't even picked a script to cover when we sat down to record, which is about uh, 30, 40 minutes ago at this point. Um, <laughs> not that long ago. No, because... Anyway, we hadn't done our homework. We were behind. Blah, blah, blah. You don't care. We weren't ready to actually shoot an episode of Grim Scenarios, but we knew we wanted to record something. Uh, we were sitting here we'll, starting to talk about what we were going to do, and we remembered that on the... On, so, as you may know, Grim Scenarios is, I guess, published or produced maybe by ECG, Everyone Can Game, the Twitch stream and YouTube stream that, you know, Alex hosts their Tuesday stream. I'm an occasional guest host on. We both sort of started in the Clock Tower streaming community on ECG. Uh, we also sometimes run script contests there. And after a bit of a hiatus from our script contests, we ran another one. It's called Back to Basics. No, that's one of the scripts we're going to talk about. It's just a base three remix base script three competition. Remix, yeah. You have to use the only base three characters. We banned all the Kickstarter characters, all the experimental characters. We said, go away. We don't want to see those. We want to say what you can do with the base three. Anyway, we also hadn't really done our homework on grading the script competition. So we said, how about we combine our two failures, our failure to grade the script competition and our failure to prepare for this episode into a special episode where we grade the script competition sort of live. But we're actually not going to do that. We're not going to come out of this and declare a winner. We're just going to talk about some scripts and some interactions and some strategic problems. Yeah. The, the big thing we wanted to do was look at some really live examples of how uh, when you're writing a script, and especially using the base three characters, the design of a script can be, uh, I don't know, messed up uh, by very, very small things. Um, there are some really particular pitfalls that you can run into that, um, quite frankly, uh, don't happen on the base three scripts. And as Emma and I were talking about earlier, uh, before we kind of started recording, um, one of the things that doing this competition reminded us both is how well balanced the base three scripts are in terms of uh, the characters that are on each of them. Emma, uh, I think, mentioned that... Um, the scripts were designed as a whole. Each script was designed as a whole. So Trouble Brewing was sort of designed and balanced around the things on Trouble Brewing. Sex and Violets was balanced around the things on Sex and Violets. And Bad Moon Rising was developed around and balanced around the things on, on that script. Whereas the experimental characters are kind of designed to be on custom scripts and live in the sort of whole space of all Clock Tower characters. So... In putting together this competition, we created uh, a deceptively challenging uh, contest in which you had to really balance characters that were difficult to balance against one another um, across multiple base three scripts. Uh, so the requirements were uh, to only use base three characters, and uh, and that's that's what we're going to that's the scripts we're going to be looking at. We're going to use these scripts as examples of interactions that we think are interesting and good, and um, uh, really have uh, something something that's kind of well thought out and, and interact well. And we're also going to point out some examples of things that don't interact well. And yeah. we want to be really clear that uh, we're not. Uh, a script being mentioned or not mentioned on this episode of the podcast does not mean that we are going to uh, that we're going to choose that script as a winner or that we think that script is bad. Um, we're using these as live examples of interesting interactions and of the things that uh, we look for when we're selecting scripts for uh, games that we're going to run or trying to grade a contest. Um, yeah, you, you've kind of asked us about this. I mean, we've gotten a number of questions from the community, or I, I've heard them, and I know Emma's heard them, that, you know, you kind of wanted us to cover some some questions about script writing. So that's what we're going to do. One of the things that I wanted to cover was some sort of classic characters whose absence or presence has a real big effect on the script. Um, and from the base three, there's really two, I think, that fundamentally change how 
I look at a script, and we're going to start with a script that we quite like, and yeah. has both of these, and shows some of the strengths and pitfalls of putting these characters on your script, which is called Stilling the Heart. And let's talk about this first of these big uh, uh, problem characters, and that's the Vortex. Oh, yeah. So the Vortex, uh, of course, has the ability that uh, townsfolk abilities yield false information, and each day, if no one is executed, evil wins. Now, uh, one of the things that's important to remember is, generally, uh, characters from the same base three script are probably going to interact pretty well, because mm -hmm. they are on the same base three script together. So Vortox classically works great with Seamstress. It works, it's interesting, with Savant, right? It works well with Oracle. Um, those are all characters that are on the same base three script with it. So we're not going to really talk, as we go forward through these scripts, about on-script interaction. We're going to talk about yeah. the off-script interaction. And as we talk about the Vortex a few times tonight, I want to be very clear. It is literally my favorite demon. I love the Vortex. I love what it does for a script. It has a lot of problems. But it also, its absence sometimes has a lot of problems. Like, Vortex is one of those characters that either needs to be on your script or doesn't. And when it doesn't need to be there and it should, it's a glaring issue with the script. And when it needs to be there... When it, and when it needs to be there, it might mean that some characters you wanted on that script really need to go. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about a character I really like with Vortex, which is the Librarian. Pop a Librarian in there? Nice. Uh, Librarian. Like, so, Librarian, much like its cousin, Washerwoman, and uh, relies on a lot of the basic TV interactions spy, drunk, to a lesser degree, poisoner, uh, to make it balanced. Like, if the librarian just, you know, if, if librarians are just consistently seeing the saint every game, and there's never any risk that that saint is a spy bluffing, or that the librarian's drunk and it's really the imp, or the librarian, like, librarian just shoots up in power level, and evil doesn't really have a way to combat that, because they can't um, reliably bluff a librarian confirmation. I think this is generally why I think this is generally why we don't see Washerwoman just show up on a lot of customers. Yeah. Trips. People think people think that librarian doesn't have the same problem as Washerwoman because it's just an outsider, it's not as big a deal as if you confirm an outsider, if you confirm a townsfolk. That's mostly wrong. Like yep. when you put librarian on a script, you need to think of, all right, how does evil either cast doubt on the librarian confirmation or bluff a librarian when they don't have a grim peeker? That's right. And Vortox is one of those ways. So I love the Vortox librarian interaction. Uh, there's a bunch of things that that's happened. Uh, the Vortex lets evil a uh, fake librarian confirmation. The storyteller gives evil an uh, outsider bluff. They put the librarian right ping on one of the evils. The evil player catches wind of this and says, oh yeah, I'm the, I'm the tinker. That's me. I'm confirmed. Not a Vortex game either. That's super powerful for evil. Uh, it also, you know... Makes the librarian confirmation harder and look more evil. Mm -hmm. oh, you saw Tinker between seat 12 and seat 6, and I'm not claiming Tinker librarian. What's up with you? You just making things up? Another thing that works really well with uh, Vortox and Librarian is having uh, outsiders that are hidden, right? So, for example, the mutant and the drunk. The librarian mm -hmm. in, a, in a Vortox game might see a mutant or a, a drunk on an evil player, and there's really no way to confirm that, you know, easily yeah so it, it can it can help the evil team bluff and the librarian can even actually be the drunk and just correctly confirm the tinker and then through that confirm that the savant's getting a true and false statement confirm right. that the seamstress ping between the demon and the gossip is actually a yes that's right it's because true. the like, librarian can... got true information so it must not be a vortex game yeah. but the librarian is the drunk seeing a true mm -hmm. ping because the drunk is the only character that can see a townsfolk token and get true information. Exactly. And a Lots of to love about librarian Vortex as an interaction. Yeah. Another interaction on here that's fun with Vortex, Emma, uh, is the monk. Mm -hmm. Throw a monk on the script here in seat twelve. Oh. oh, well, that's okay. We can have we can have a monk in seat four. That's fine. I got it. <laughs> no, no, we, are, you. we were both 
We were both too eager to put That's down right. a monk. We love the monk. I'll let you talk about the monk. You were excited about the monk. No, no, no. You, you, you oh, were the one who brought oh, a monk. That's it's your true. turn to talk about a well, character yeah. so, you like. Uh, monk, is a, monk is a really interesting interaction with the Vortox because uh, when a monk hits an ongoing information role in a Vortox game, that player is safe from the demon, which means that they are safe from the Vortox's townsfolk abilities yield false information effect, which means that a monk can allow good players to get true information in a Vortox game. Now, mm -hmm. you might not know that that's happening, and it can be disruptive to the good team because you're getting information that isn't consistently coherent or understandable. However, once you solve back that it is a Vortox game, that monk, those monk protections are going to yield some good information and that the good team can use. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's really interesting. And like, yeah, um, I love, love that the monk in the four dogs. Yeah, love it. Oh, why don't we talk about a let's, problematic one? Yeah, let, let's talk about one of our other problem childs. One of our other classic problem childs on script building generally, the gossip, which is on this script. Oh, the gossip! One of my most favorite roles to be in all of Blood the Clock Tower. It's so silly. It's so goofy. It's so funny. Like, love being the gossip. Every time I see the gossip token, I am thrilled. And, and Unless I haven't actually started to play yet, and I'm looking at the script, <laughs> and I see the gossip token, and then I'm like, most of the time I see the gossip token on the script, I'm like, oh, you probably didn't want the gossip. I know it's fun, but the evil team's going to be crying. Now, I can see why this script writer put a gossip on here. Mm -hmm. right? I can see why the gossip was chosen for this script, because... Uh, they're looking to provide the good team with some source of information that isn't vortoxable, right? Uh, on Sect and Violets, traditionally, it's the Snake Charmer. Uh, here, they've got a Gossip. They've also got a Gambler, which does very much the, can do very much the same thing. Um, but the Gossip causes problems because of the play pattern that it generates, right, Emma? Yes. Uh, the effect of issue of what's going to happen here is the gossip is going to maybe be allowed to kill one player normally and then forced to kill itself if it ever gets a second truth because it's so hard confirmed every time when as soon as there's either three kills in one night because the assassin also goes or like two multi-night kills the gossip is so confirmed the storyteller really has no choice except for to kill the gossip off because otherwise it's just backbreaking for the evil team and that just sort of also makes it sadder for the gossip. Like, it makes their play pattern, the fun level of their play pattern go down because they know that their reward for gossiping correctly twice is going to be death. Um, it makes it sadder for the evil team because they can't really combat that. Now, they have tools on here to yeah, sort of push back. They have a tools. poisoner. They have an assassin. Tinker. Have, Tinker helps. But that all, like, requires the evil team to find the gossip, which a good town makes it hard to find a gossip by having multiple people gossip in plausible ways. Yeah. It, it's it's tricky for the evil team to know when the when the true gossip has happened or when a false gossip has come from the real gossip, at least fairly early in the game. And that can make those yeah. early game gossips really, really tricky to track down. Maybe a poisoner can so, hit the gossip when they truthfully gossip. I mean, hopefully a poisoner that hears a gossip can say, seat 10 is the demon. Uh, is going to is going to disrupt that in some way. Uh, the Vortox information doesn't disrupt it, so uh, so you're you're going to have to have a poisoner hit it. You're going to have to have the assassin find a, a, an answer for it. Uh, the storyteller is going to have to use the tinker in a creative way. So there are ways out of it, but it generally needs something that can consistently get extra kills to make it less um, confirmable. Uh, and, and gambler gambler is has a similar problem but to a lesser extent because it only happens the one time um, yeah. so it's a little it's a little bit easier to it's a little bit easier to work with um yeah i think that kind of uh, is good for gossip for now yeah we might talk about gossip again more later uh oh, we talk about something that's yeah. a little tricky with a vortex and controversial and that'll then we'll probably move on from this group, which is a poisoner yeah. uh the Vortex genuinely decreases the power of the Poisoner by, like, sort of making it redundant with several townsfolk. The Empath 
oracle, savant, seamstress, chef, librarian. None of these are changed whether the poisoner hits them or not. It's not necessarily the end of the world. Like, oh, the, the poisoner has, has a bunch of things to do before the poisoner yeah. to do. They're just looking for something different in a Vortox yeah. game than they usually would. They're looking for a gambler. They're looking for a monk. They're looking for a slayer, a soldier, a mare. And they have a really interesting combo I like, which is the poisoner can poison the Vortox. The assassin can kill someone to cover that. And it will really mess with the information by giving everyone a day of true information so that even if they solve it's a Vortox game, there's some misinformation tossed in there that's covered fully by the assassin. You can only pull off that trick once on this script, but it's a fun one. But one time is sometimes enough. Yeah. Let's talk about one more. Oh, there's one more thing I want to talk about. Yeah. The script. In fact, this is one of the reasons why we're talking about this script. Fortune Teller Vortox. Now, this is not an unheard of combination, but a lot of times you'll also see it with Legion, because Legion provides an alternative explanation for the Fortune Teller getting a yes at midnight. The problem is that the information that the fortune teller gets is binary. Like empath still works with Vortox because it can be a zero, one, or two. So you can, the information can still get disrupted in some direction, right? It's also binary, but also targeted. Like if the yeah. fortune teller was like, if it was like a flower girl where the flower girl was reading six, seven, eight people a day, it wouldn't matter as much that it's binary. Exactly. But since the fortune teller gets to focus in on two people a day and there can only be one demon, like, after two or three nights, the fortune teller just knows it's a Vortox game, which is really powerful for the good team. Uh, like, just, yeah. You probably want a flower girl as your demon detector on Vortox scripts, not a fortune teller. Yep. It's just, it's just very strong. Between, uh, and we mentioned it uh, when we failed to record, between fortune teller, flower girl, and chambermaid, which are really the three kind of demon detector, kind of direct demon detector kind of characters, um, fortune teller is pretty rough with Vortox because of the way it gets yeah. information. You need something else. Could be Drunk. You know, Drunk is on here, Poisoner's on here, but it's it's hard. Uh, yeah, I would much prefer to see Flower Girl or even Chambermaid on this script because Chambermaid also gets messed up from the Vortox because its waking pattern will no longer be demon -y. Uh With that said, like this script, probably would play this script. Yeah. Let's move on to our next thing to talk about. Let's switch to a script that needs a Vortox but doesn't have one. So what do I, what well, this script needs a Vortox? Oh, this script needs a Vortox. <clears throat> Let's uh, talk about why this script needs a Vortox, Emma. Well, I'm just going to throw a bunch of characters up here. Yep. Oh, look, a dreamer. Hmm, that gets binary information. An artist. Oh, I mean, that gets very strong direct information. The flower girl, that's a traditionally powerful demon detector that really works best with Vortox because it can disrupt that flower girl information. Seamstress, literally just find out if two people are on the same team. Loves the Vortox. Oh, the Oracle? Finding out how many players are dead at night? Seems important when you have a Zombo and a Fangu. Absolutely, yeah. Like, with the Demon Suite on the script is Zombo and Fangu, and with these five townsfolk, you just need a Vortox. Like, if it's a Zombo game, which is going to be pretty obvious a lot of the time, and the oracle number procs after you execute someone and then no one dies in the night, you're just executing the zombie again. Literally every time. Yeah. And like, there's no there's no fallback mechanism for the demon here. There's no Scarlet Woman, which the Scarlet Woman zombie is already kind of gross. There's no evil twin to provide some other additional time, right? There's no, there's no mastermind. mastermind. The, actually the thing that mastermind does that is actually quite good is right help help with that situation da can't protect yeah. the dead zombul it's rough yeah uh flower girl you need you need the vortex to make it so the flower girl can't just quite just lock in on cutting their grim in half every day yep same with the artist same with the seamstress like you need the vortex to make these are just like these are like so much more powerful than like TB information roles. The artists and the seamstress, like artists and seamstress over empath and fortune teller every day. They do what those characters do, but they do it more efficiently and without having to deal with, without as much risk of exposing themselves. Yeah. Um, like they need a Vortox as that sort of constant threat of maybe my information is wrong. Mm -hmm. Dreamer, like 
Dreamer without a Vortox is just so hard for the evil team to pull off. And yeah, you have a spy here, so the but it's not enough. You really need the Vortox. I think I think the lesson probably to take away from this is the more S and V characters that you have on your script, the more you need to look closely at Vortox and think, does this need to have Vortox at it? Yeah. And I'm telling you, when it's these five. Maybe you can sneak one of these five on there without a war. I think you can get away maybe, with one. Maybe you can get two if you have like the right suite of of misinformation and evil bluffs. The script has poisoner. It has drunk. Like it's there's there's things you can do. It's you got recluse to, mi- to to misregister. It's got spy to misregister. There's there's enough to have seamstress on here. I think there's enough to have yeah. oracle but on here. You can maybe get away with seamstress and dreamer between the. Spy, the poisoner, the drunk. The Oracle recluse. gets disrupted by recluse. Yeah, there's there's some stuff that can happen. Like the recluse can be an excuse for why the dreamer misfires on an evil character day one. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I'm the recluse, so I got that's why your good at character role for me is wrong. That's yeah. a plausible explanation. It just there's too many. It's hard. At, at this density of S and V characters, you need a vortex. All right, let's go to the next one. Uh, we've got another. Uh, we got another script, and we got another issue we want to talk about that we've already touched on, but we're going to go into it in a little bit more detail. And that is talking about everybody's favorite, the gossip. Where's the gossip? Yeah. Why don't I see gossip, Emma? Did I, did because I open there's the no wrong... gossip on this script. Oh yeah, I opened. You opened the wrong... up the correct script. Oh yeah, I have the correct uh... script. Yeah, I, I rather like this script, but when I was looking at it, I had a rare complaint, which is, feels like you forgot to put a gossip on it somehow. And let's talk about why. This guy. Oh, it's the Poe, everybody! Everybody loves a Poe. Uh, Poe really likes a gossip. They really like each other. Like, first off, like, the like gossip lets other demons bluff his Poe. Um, because gossip really helps juice up that count to a triple kill. Like when you look at what's on the script to help the the to help other demons bluff Poe, it's Assassin Godfather, Tinker, and Gambler. And but the problem is that just other than Assassin, these characters aren't reliable killers. Godfather and, might kill, but doesn't have very much control over when it kills. It rarely it Gambler, you know, it can kill once per game, and if that's not the day where evil's trying to frame the Poe, it doesn't help. Yep. Uh, Tinker, same story, they can do it once if they know evil's trying to set up a fake Poe charge, but it's tough. And also, Gambler, Tinker, and Godfather are all very trackable in terms mm-hmm. of good knowing where the kill came from. Assassin and Gossip are the kind of two less trackable death at night effects, right? If a godfather gets a kill at night, a player's probably gonna come out, gonna come out and go, oh, I was the I, I was I was the outsider. I'm the reason that the godfather got a kill. Maybe they don't know because they're the drunk. Maybe they're an evil goon. They don't out it. You know, that's possible. But in general, that's pretty trackable. Gambler is generally gonna know, right, that they were that they were killed by their ability or not, you know, or they're gonna have a sus, you know, on the person that they've gambled. So there's, you know, there's a good reason to have a gambler here, and you know it's kind of the opposite of the of what we looked at before, where the gambler probably needed or the gossip probably needed to be a snake charmer to mimic gossip. Uh, in this case, we have a snake charmer where we probably want a gossip, Emma. I think I think we probably want a gossip instead of a snake. Yeah, I would rather see a gossip here just because of what it does for both the Poe and the Zombul. Um Yeah, yeah the uh, Zombul also really wants gossip. Because it really wants something to get some kills while it's not it's not killing. Uh, some other thing you might want to see in a script with a Poe is you might want to be looking for some other explanation for why no one dies if the Poe wants to charge and doesn't have a way to cover. Like yep. if you have a Poe Devil's Advocate Poisoner game, you have Monk, you have Tea Lady, you have Fool, you have Sailor. You probably want some sort of global explanation like a mastermind 
maybe even a minstrel. Minstrel is very hard to make work, so I don't want to sound like I'm advocating for a minstrel. Yeah. We are explicitly not advocating for people to put minstrel on non-VMR scripts. It yeah. It is very hard to make work. And uh, I know a lot of people put it on their scripts for this competition, and it's always a challenge when we see Minstrel on a script to really figure out, does this mm -hmm. work or not? It has so many, it just has so many interactions. But I do think if you flopped uh, maybe Assassin for Mastermind and Snake Charmer for Gossip, I think this script would be a little more robust in my eyes. Mm -hmm. It would have a lot more replayable. Yeah, I think I think it I think it it's 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 quite good. Like it's it's nicely balanced. There's a lot that's that's good here, but mm -hmm. um, it it there's definitely a need for a gossip. I think especially especially and maybe something to explain no night death, which I think I would incline to be mastermind for assassin, mm -hmm. especially like there's some also there's like barbers are relatively awkward, um, with the assassin. Yeah, barber barber cycling assassin. Uh, is a little bit different than Pit Hag cycling so assassin. I, I also think this script probably needs to lose the barber because barber is super awkward with the zombie. Yep, barber zombie is not 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 like, ideal. Like uh, you execute the zombie day one, the assassin kills the barber in the night. Yes, swap the two of them, and now you have a dead assassin who can just lie and wait till the end of the game and stab someone. Yeah, that's pretty pretty brutal. That's pretty brutal. So. Uh, let's pull up the other one of these that we wanted to talk about in terms of the gossip. Uh, and that is this script, The Butler and the Goon. Yeah, uh, we sort of talked about this a little bit with one of the other script, with the first script we covered, which is, I think, still in my heart. Uh, what the heck? What is a gossip doing on this script? What? Well, literally. Uh, and because I know who wrote this script, uh, I'm just going to make fun of him by name. Uh, Walter, why is a gossip on this script? What are you doing here? You, ha If you really wanted to gossip, you have an absurd number of outsiders and minions when combined. You could just get rid of one of those and put on a shab or a poe, and then you could have your gossip if that's really what you wanted. It, it, the gossip kind of makes this script close to unplayable. There's really just not enough deaths for a gossip here. Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of respect for Walter as a script writer. I've played a lot of Walter's scripts. I run Walter's scripts on uh, the stream regularly. Um, I I don't know that I I don't know that I feel quite as strongly as Emma does about gossip here. Um, my greater concern here is the combination of gossip and gambler and the amount of confirmation that that creates yes godfather and assassin are here gossip is already super strong and now you've got a gambler one of those two like uh, as a storyteller i'm really concerned about putting both of those in the bag together because surely one of those two is going to get some really strong confirmatory information yes there's no dashi yes there's poisoner i don't really like no dashi with gossip and gambler because a gossip that never gets a kill sitting next to a Nodashi looks like a really obvious gossip sitting next to a Nodashi. A gambler sitting next to a Nodashi that never dies and gossips themselves with the innkeeper. That it's it's a it's a complicated set set of it, in, in, interactions. But gossip you, knows what's going on. You really need multi kill demons for gossip to work. You really really need multi kill demons for gossip to work. I really cannot emphasize that enough. Like you need for, some way. You need some way to in you need some way to have that gossip be disrupted. You yeah, you either need it to be able to be pushed aside as a Shabloth or a Poe getting their extra kills off. Or you need like Porno Dashi over here in C Date is just going to be pummeled by a gossip over there in C two. Uh I would like to gossip that the demon is in seats uh five is between seats uh, one and six clockwise inclusive. Uh, also, uh, a lesser problem than the gossip, because almost everything is a lesser problem than the gossip on custom scripts. Uh, this is our trio of... This is really our trio of misinformation. Recluse, 
for the map. It's really just these two. Reckless can do a little bit of work uh, for the math. Goon. Goon can do a little bit of work. But it's, it's not enough. Like, if the math number is higher than, like, if the math, like, the math number of one, like, you're just sort of, with this little other reasons for math numbers to proc. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough for a no Uh You need probably some other min de- evils that cause misinformation. I think I think I think just an additional demon, and an, specifically an additional demon that gets multi that's multi kill shab or poe helps a lot. Yeah, like even like a shab who had more chances to like proc math by hitting an innkeeper protect or a mare, I think would help a bit here. Um, or the goon, that's another way to proc it. Mm-hmm. Like you need non traceable poison misinformation for a mathematician. Like, a Philo could also help. Your Philo and Math often work well together. Yeah. You just need something else besides, like... It it's almost forces you to put Poisoner in the bag. And with, five, and with five minions, yeah. like, with five available minions, it reduces the chances of Poisoner actually being in the bag, but increases the chances of Nodashi being in play. Yeah, like, and you really almost, like, you really need to, like always put Poisoner in the back, and then the question is, what's my second minion, what's my third minion? If I'm playing a two or three minion game. Like, the Mathematician is sort of forcing Poisoner to be there. Alright. Uh, or Drunk, I guess. There's there, there's some there's some possibility. Um, anyway, uh, let's take a look at uh, one which uh, I think we, we both agreed is a really creative script, and that is the script. Yeah, and why is this creative and interesting? As I'm sure our editor, I'm furiously, I've pulled up the Fable tab and I'm furiously moving my mouse around the Toymaker Fabled as I speak. I'm sure our editor will have some other, like, flashing signs, because that is obviously... I've, I've moved it into a space where hopefully the editor can do something interesting with it. So Toymaker. Uh, Toymaker is a Fable, is a Fable that we don't see a lot on uh, the Grim Scenarios or ECG because it's for teensies, and we rarely ever talk about teensies. Uh, it's a... The demon may choose not to attack and must do this once per game. Evil players get normal start and info. It's designed for as a way to... Uh, in teensies, in scripts designed for less than... games for less than seven players, uh, the evil team doesn't actually doesn't learn each other by default, and the playmaker isn't, and that's for balance purposes. Like, it just makes it too easy for them if they know each other. So yep. instead of knowing each other, so they lose that as the balance mechanism instead of getting rid of the minion. Um, but the toy maker undoes that and instead balances it by forcing the demon to take a breather one night. Uh, and the author of this script uh, said, you know, I know the toy maker is only for teensies. I know it has no purpose on a full size script. Let's do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I just had to comment on something that that was cre- that was that interesting and that creative. Uh, we've loaded up this script with reasons for fake toy maker nights to happen too, which is super interesting. Yeah, we've got Exorcist, we've got Innkeeper, Soldier, uh, Minstrel. Minstrel. Yep. Uh, we've got a Goon, right? Uh, yeah. Mastermind. If the demon sort of like suspects that it might be a minstrel knight, they can fulfill the toy maker condition on a minstrel knight. Mm-hmm. That's pretty useful. It's really interesting. Yep. Uh, I really I like this script a lot. It has a lot of fun things. Uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's really fun. I think there's a lot of interesting things that can happen on it. I do think. To some extent, there are a couple of interactions I'm not excited about on it uh, that I think yeah, are yeah, I'm pulling up some characters that problematic I that don't way. necessarily work uh, very well. Uh, librarian doesn't really have a whole lot of disruption. Washerwoman doesn't have a whole lot of disruption. Yeah, it's these TV characters that are sort of balanced around the existence of the spy. Uh, these yeah. three are my big problems with the script. Yeah, is these three characters really 
work in conjunction with the spy. And there's no spy here. I, I don't really think there's room for a spy here. I guess you could add it as a fifth minion, but then you're I, I'm not always a huge fan of that. But I, I wonder if there's something we could have done other than these three. And maybe it's a limitation of base three. The the base three. I think maybe if we allowed experimentals, I can see the Undertaker turning into a cannibal. The yeah. washroom and turning into a pixie. And then my concerns here yeah, then my concerns here are a little reduced. Yeah, and, and and I I do I will say that as I make my notes on on script as I as I do script analysis and as I do script review, um, you know I often find uh, with these contests that we run that I put a note on a lot of scripts that say you should you should revisit this not within the limitations of the competition, like yeah. the limitations of the competition have made this script not as good as it could be. I think this yeah. script could be really good and something that I would want to run. But it needs to I mean, have access to other characters. To be clear, I already really want to run the script. I think it's hilarious. I, like I yeah. love the concept in of the script. I think getting away from the restrictions, particularly with these three characters, would help. Because I think these three characters are just gonna be real rough for good evil. I think there's not a lot they can do. If you're the evil team and you're just in there going, oh yeah, no, that player's just good. They're the Undertaker and the monks protecting them every night, and I don't know who the monk is. It's yeah. pretty rough. I, I have, like, I have, a, I have a problem with the the inability of the evil team to. I actually think this script needs assassin. Um, the evil team needs a way to kill through ongoing protections because once somebody gets pretty well confirmed, they really need a way to deal with monk innkeeper. Um, they need a, they need something to do on an exorcist night, like something could, to, could happen on an exorcist. Like they just need something else. I'm also not a huge fan of minstrel with evil twin, um, because it creates it creates a predictable minstrel night. Maybe that works okay here because of the toy maker and the demon being able to not do it. But I don't love you know. Good knows that they kill a minion when they kill an evil twin, which means that the disruptive everybody's drunk night it doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's prob it's problematic there. It really just is bad. Um, Though I do like mind. Twin on the script. I like Twin on the script, but I think Minstrel. I think Minstrel's the problem. Yeah, maybe yeah. we don't quite need Minstrel to. Uh, I think there's enough other stuff. Yeah, I think there's enough other stuff for the Twin Maker that we maybe don't need Minstrel, and we can keep Twin. A lot of these, I think, are really also interesting Twin options. I think mm -hmm. uh, Town Cryer is an interesting Twin option. It's rough in one minion games because. The town prior's information is just always, oh yeah, he's a minion, she's yeah. a minion. Uh, but I think other than it's rough enough for Undertaker for the same reason it's traditionally rough for Dreamer. Yeah. Um, but I think other than that, I think these are some really interesting twin choices. I think the twin is good on the script. I think the I think the minstrel I think the minstrel is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say, and I worry that evil can get I, stuck. In 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 innkeeper and monk loops, but I do think this isn't a good. I do think this has a really good. I really like direction. this script, yeah. and I would probably try running it as is because I'm so excited about the misuse of the toy maker. Um, <laughs> How dare you misuse the toy maker in this way? <laughs> but uh, I I do think these four characters are the ones I'm. I would hope in a version two to see replaced by yeah. something a little more either bluffable by evil or that worked a little bit better with evil. Now, like with the Mistral and Evil Twin, like the the it's not necessarily the end of the world. It's only the end of the world if you actually get the twin pair right. Because well, if you then get the, the twin Mistral pair wrong, you lose. So. <laughs> right. You get the twin pair wrong, you lose. So there's still that same sort of reluctance to test the twin pair with unlike some of the optimization problems. It will still help the evil team. Is that even though people will know how powerful the twin getting the twin right on a, into a minstrel knight is? they'll still be scared to do it because if they get it wrong, they lose. And there is a funny interaction where uh, if a uh, minion gets killed and you have a minstrel knight uh, and an, and then the evil the, the, the evil twin is killed the next night, you have another minstrel yeah. knight and you just have like very strange things going on and the evil twin is drunk for a whole day so you there's, can kill the good and, twin. It's, it's, uh, there's some yeah. weird stuff, but I just... There, there's some fun counterplay, like the poison... You can flip the goon, the goon can act very minion-y, the goon can get executed, the shab can 
trigger the toy maker yeah. to buff a minstrel knight, and then people can safely execute a twin the next day and blunder bus into executing the good twin. Like there's stuff you can do here. Yeah. It's definitely it's like like even the minstrel is rough as it is with people twin i think the script makes it not maybe as much into the world as other things are i, I think it's probably very still yeah it, it's probably still the wrong choice because minstrel is almost always the wrong choice minstrel's almost the wrong, always the wrong choice and as as we'll see here shortly courtier is also almost always the wrong choice so but i love i love this script's name i love that it just decided to say hey let's misuse the toy baker oh yeah i love what it did with that i think it's really fun i think uh yeah, I I think these four characters may be. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna bring up back to basics, base three only version. Uh, we both also thought this script was really interesting and creative, uh, and does 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 something kind of uh kind of interesting and different with with a very TB like kind of script. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but as I set out, let's put. This. No, let's put this. Let's just circle on this particular interaction and the problem it can cause. Yeah. So, do, do, does everybody see why this is a problem? Can, can, any, can anybody think about why a tea lady next to a virgin is a problem already? And uh, then a uh, Philo next to that tea lady and virgin is maybe also a problem maybe that philo goes virgin emma yeah so this virgin gets the gets executed and doesn't die confirming all of them and then this virgin gets executed and confirms there's not even spy shenanigans going on how about let's just uh let's just go ahead i'm just gonna i'm just gonna grab this i'm just gonna grab this tea lady real quick emma and i'm just gonna move it i'm gonna move this tea lady over here I'm gonna put this tea lady over here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put a let's put a oh let's put a uh, uh, one of these here, and let's put a let's put a well, we can just put anything there, right? And now yeah. this this chef can nominate the virgin and doesn't die when they nominate the virgin. This, and this fool, fool can, can nominate, nominate the, virgin. the virgin and doesn't and die. not even use their first life. By nominating the virgin. <laughs> Even if the tea yeah. lady's not there, the fool and the virgin is already interesting. And yes, you know, these could be characters that get sussed out, but they're next to a tea lady. So that means that yeah. no, they're, like, they're going to get confirmed eventually, you know? Evil has a spy and a poisoner. Like, they can fight back at these super powerful tea lady co- enable combos. Yeah. But it does, so- it just sort of limits what the storyteller can do put in the bag and if the storyteller isn't careful about what goes in the bag uh uh Stuff things can, can get very rough if they go optimization heavy. Yeah. yeah i mean you could just you can just end up in a really awkward situation where you've got five confirmed goods on day two or three and their evil team's having trouble killing them off and yeah evil doesn't have yeah. a catch-up mechanic is another thing here there's no assassin there's no godfather um, there's no multi-kill demon. Evil doesn't have a way to catch up after not getting kills, uh, which can cause a game to go quite long and allow good to just keep plugging away with fortune teller, mathematician, you know, chambermaid. It's it's tricky. I think it's a really creative and interesting rework of uh, of TB uh, with some other interesting interactions. Um, but I I think this specific interaction and this specific yeah. inter- interaction. Tea Lady with Virgin was on a lot of scripts. Yeah, it was on uh, quite. We a wanted few to talk about it. And we will, like. I'm. Yeah, this is again a script I really like and I really respect the author of. Yep. Uh, yep. We love you, Lachlan. We think your scripts are great. Uh, I do think maybe this the Tea Lady's ability to do some combos here are a little uh, over the top. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little it's a little it's a little tough, and I think this really wants a very experienced storyteller to really think about what goes into the bag. I do think there are multiple bags possible with this. I think you can make different interesting bags, but you really need to spend some time thinking about what you put into the bag on the, with this version of the script. I expect yeah. that there is a non-base-3-only version of this script, and I would love to see that. 
Well, yeah, since it says base three only version in the yeah. script type, so, I'm suspecting there's a second version. So, so please, please feel free to send us the second version again. You know, sometimes, sometimes the limitations of a contest make a script hard to, you know, hard to, hard to, hard to make it work. All right, I got another one here for us. Uh, all right, one with a title that I really love. Flames on the side of my face. Lovely clue reference there. Uh, Emma, we, we each had something we wanted to talk about on this script, and uh, you wanted to talk about outsider modifications. And specifically, I think we wanted to we wanted to look at the script and say, hmm, there there isn't there isn't an outsider modification character on here, but there is a drunk. Yeah, so let's let's talk a little bit about the drunk as outsider modification. First of all, the drunk is outsider modification. Like it just is. Yep. Like that's that's what it does. Like it adds an extra townsfolk to the bag and opens up the space scene for evil to bluff outsider. That's right. The drunk is in fact outsider modification. This is one of the reasons why I get very annoyed when people toss Sentinel on a drunk script. Like if you really didn't, if you really think you need more outsider modification than just the drunk, you got to do something else than add the sentinel because it's just doing what the drunk does already. Um, they're doing the same thing, but the drunk's a character is yeah. This is outsider modification. It's probably not enough. It's outsider mod. It's one directional outsider modification, which is the problem. Uh, if you notice. Uh, TB and S and V have each have multi-directional outsider modification. TB has the Baron and the Drunk, yep. which up and down, up goes up with the Baron and down with the Drunk, which leaves you at a range of plus or minus one, basically. Yep. Yeah, technically, it's plus two to minus one, but because most Baron games will end up having a Drunk in them, it's possible for it not to. But because most Baron games will end up having a drunk, it's effectively like plus or minus one. Yeah. Um, S and V is plus or minus one. Van Gogh, Vigor Mortis. Either a Van Gogh or a Vigor Mortis or neither. It's that range. And of course, BMR plus or minus collapses one. the plus or minus one into a single character, the Sorry. Godfather, which is literally plus or minus one. Yep. <laughs> or is not in play and it's zero. Yeah, exactly. No matter. So, like, there are scripts that make like wider ranges of outsider modification work. Um, there's some scripts that experiment with like lots of outsider modification and find ways to make that interesting. Uh, you know, catfishing is probably the most custom in the world, and well, uh, like you can criticize catfishing and. I have, and I know Milk has, and other people have. It is a good script. There's a reason why it's so popular. And its theory is sort of just, it tells us on literally all the base three outsider modification except for Baron. Yep. It has a Fengu, a Vigor Mortis, a Godfather, a Balloonist, and a Drunk. Like, the range of what outsiders are in the bag is from plus three with the Godfather, Balloonist, and Fengu to minus two with the which minus three with the Fangu, Vigor Mortis, and Drunk. Like, yep. it's a wild amount of center modification. You can make that work. I'm not saying, but like, less than that plus or minus one range is really hard to make work. Yeah. And this script only has that minus one with the Drunk. Yeah, you need, you need the plus, you need the plus one possibility. On the other hand, it does have a storm caught Butler. Storm caught Butler, which I'm excited for too. I do think, <laughs> I do think this is another script where it just needs one or two uh, maybe experimental characters to help it out to kind of swap in for some of the things. One of the problems centrally located on this script, in my opinion, uh, is that while the uh, Shabaloth has been added for the purpose of uh, having a multi-kill demon, and I think that's great with Gossip, and, and you know that kind of answers a complaint we made earlier, uh, to go along with the Shabaloth, uh, the scriptwriters have added a professor. And... Oh, that's not even what I thought you were going to mention. Oh, I, I haven't even gotten to that one yet. I haven't, I haven't gotten to that part yet. So this is a two, this is a two part problem. Uh, problem one is the scriptwriters added a professor, and also have on the script a philosopher. 
And this results in a problem where we can cycle the Philo yeah. and the Professor. That's a problem. That's too much confirmation. That's too many people coming back to life. That's good players coming back to life. That's the Professor uh, bringing someone back to life, dying. The Philo bringing the Professor back to life, then dying. Then the Professor bringing the Philo back to life. Right, that's two characters that can literally just cycle each other back to life. No, luckily there's a poisoner, a spy, an assassin, and demons that can kill on the script to put yeah. a stop to this nonsense. But it is, but it is an issue. The fact that the nonsense is a possible is an issue. Yeah. The other you piece just... of nonsense that's problematic and is a is a, is is genuinely something that is uh, is a problem is Shabaloth and Scarlet Woman, um, mm -hmm. because the Shabaloth tokens, the Shabaloth death tokens get put down in the night. Now, the storyteller wants to bring back to life one of these characters that's died in the night using the Shabaloth's ability. Then, the Shabaloth is killed, and the Shabaloth jump, uh, after the Shabaloth dies, the Scarlet Woman picks up the Shabaloth token. These two deads go away, and the storyteller can't resurrect anybody. And if this happens yep. in the mid or late game and the storyteller hasn't had the opportunity to bring someone back or has chosen not to. Normally a storyteller should do their resurrection early, but here's the real problem. Let's uh, bring this shab back to life. Let's kill, 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 kill. Kill that. Kill mm -hmm. this. Kill that. So now we're on Let's five alive. Scrum. We'll say dead. Dead. So, Mr. Original Shadface dies. We have a new Shabloth over here. These tokens go off the board. And now... And Good just lost because they executed the demon. Yep. Because now this Shabloth is going to get two kills in the night, and there's no one that can be brought back to life. But also... What was their other option? If they execute the Scarlet Woman, they also lose. They also lose because. But at least in that case, like the like one of ten or nine could have been brought back to life, right? To solve, to say, hey, I'm not going to let you cheese this victory that easily. But when you execute the Shab, no one can be brought to back to life. The only alive Shabloth didn't choose any players last night, and the Shabloth can use that uh, effect in the mid to late game as well to kill someone, kill themselves, pass over to the Scarlet Woman and have the same same effect if the story Well, story yeah, but then at least you have a chance to execute the Scarlet Woman. Yeah, then you at least have a chance to execute the Scarlet Woman. But again, there's a um, lot of interactions with the Shabaloth that make it not great with the Scarlet Woman. Yeah, you're on five alive again. If you execute yeah. the demon, you lose. If you execute a good player, you probably lose. The storyteller can save you with a resurrection. That's really rough. And it feels really rough for it feels really rough for evil if the storyteller has to bring back somebody on final five on final five the Scarlet Woman firm because the Scarlet Woman caught yeah it's just yeah it's like a pit hag change without any signaling and that's almost always really awkward yeah like you have your protection rules in the script but you probably need a few more to really justify a shab Scarlet Woman combo which is hard to justify even if you max out on your protection rules. We have uh, two more scripts that we just wanted to look at interactions on. Uh, let me bring up this one first. Uh, so uh, one interaction that I saw a bit of, and I don't have a problem with it, but I know that some people find it unfair or unfun, is the combination of Pit Hag and Assassin. Mm -hmm. And specifically when you also have Baron on the script. Because Pit Hag with Baron means that basically the Baron does its work adding in two outsiders into the game, which is very, very powerful. I'm I'm very vocal about believing that Baron is one of the if not the most powerful and one of the most powerful minions, um, just because it removes two towns townsfolk from the bag and replaces them with outsiders. And then uh the Pit Hag then says, uh, well great, I'm gonna turn this I'm gonna turn this Baron into an assassin. Uh, on this script in particular, 
the bigger mortis can then kill the pit hag, letting it keep its ability. And kill the assassin. And kill letting the assassin. The assassin letting lie in wait. Ability. Letting it keep its or like the now there's dead assassin cycling that the evil team the good team has no ability to deal with. And no, can't find the right button. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, here, here we've got a poisoned. Here we've got a bigger poisoned player. Here we've got a bigger poisoned player. Right, the the de- the minions are doing a whole lot now. They've given up living minions to do this with the bigger. But every other night, there's an extra assassination because yeah, but... the assassin's also really efficient with the pit hag because it gets to act yeah. again the night of the, the change. The night of the change. Like yeah. other minions that have one off that have sort of one off abilities act again the night after the change. So now- it's. This can be interesting with some other things in the bag. This is a maybe a little bit gross, but a viable way to handle a gossip on your script without a multi-kill demon. The pit hag cycling an assassin can can create that uh, possibility. Uh, a lot of people dislike this, uh, primarily because the other thing that could happen is a pit hag that's alive late in the game that's never killed any, that's never that's never been revealed or that's hidden very well, can also turn themselves into the assassin, right, and then get an extra kill at the end of the game. But there's a lot of really awkward things that can happen with this interaction. Yeah, uh, just a few other small notes on this script as we're talking through it. Uh, Flower Girl, as we've discussed, with Ode of Vortox is incredibly powerful. Yeah. <laughs> You're probably wanting to avoid that. Uh, Snake Charmer and Puck is a rough interaction because it's really confirmatory that the Snake Charmer happened when the Puka said it does because there's suddenly no, there's a night of no deaths that follows. Yeah. Or there's, yeah, there's a night of, an immediate night of no deaths. So, like, the, the, the pushback of they could just be bluffing doesn't work as well because the no death after the snake charm is really confirmed. Or yeah, the pit hag can also simulate that, but it's just, it's really, con- it, it's not a great character combo, even though they both look like snakes. And then last and sort of maybe most importantly is chambermaid uh, requires the mm-hmm. evil team to have bluffs that match their waking patterns. And other than chambermaid and snake charmer, which while an okay bluff, isn't necessarily the bluff a demon wants to take every time. There's no bluffs here that match the waking pattern of a pucka. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, <clears throat> the pucka can't bluff chambermaid to the chambermaid. Yeah, that would be that would be awkward for the pucka to do. So, that. like, if the ch- like if <clears throat> so, like, since the uh, they can bluff unused philosopher, I guess. It's it's <laughs> it's it's, rough. it's hard to build the bag. Right, that's the problem. Right? We're asking the storyteller to build to build a bag that works for like, uh, the the demon, and it's just hard because they just don't have something. To Imp and Vigor have their four options here. Yeah, there's uh, options the other there. problem. The other problem for Chambermaid here is, uh, there is an Exorcist, which does something, I guess. But Chambermaid is spoiled by like the very different waking patterns of the BMR demons. The Puka that wakes up every night, the Zumble that wakes up semi randomly. The Shavenpo wake up every night, but can sometimes be stopped by from waking by an exorcist. Gives like the chambermaid information a lot of doubt. Yeah. It- uh, whereas here, it's really just the exorcist that's creating most of the waking pattern doubt. You really need a few more things for your chambermaid. And this and- is once again circling this flower girl. Maybe this is a script that wants a vortex. Yep. Maybe this is a script that wants a vortex. I think. Chambermaid, you know, when we look at BMR as a script on the whole, Chambermaid really explains why the demons have such complicated waking patterns. They have a very specific kind of synergy and, that works. And Chambermaid is incredibly powerful. Like, Chambermaid is the only real information rule on BMR. It's yep. the only one, and it's such a powerful type of information that it can largely carry the information load for an entire script by itself. Yeah, there's a grandmother. Yeah, gossips and gamblers get something resembling information, but it's really just the chambermaid that's getting information on multiple players throughout the game. 
and the chambermaid is such a beast that it's fine. Like that's enough information if you have good chambermaid information you can trust. Yeah. It's really powerful. Chambermaid like, is... You, but you really need to think about what goes on your script with Chambermaid. Yep. All right, Emma, one more. And we're just about up to up to where we wanted to be. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is another script I really like. Um, yeah, and for clarity, we like a lot of these scripts. You know, yeah. we're interested in, in playing a lot of these scripts, and it's probably not going to be an easy decision. The like it has you know some issues we've already sort of talked about a little bit, but there's one other thing we did want to talk about because this was another thing that happened in a lot of scripts. Yeah, and it's just it's an interaction that you're going to need to, especially if you're storytelling, think a lot about how to balance. If you're the good team, <clears throat> it's going to be real tricky, and that's these two lovely fellows. And but let's to make the interaction clearer, uh, let's turn this into a. Hooka, let's kill a bunch of people I think we should have. Yeah, it looks better. Probably this many people alive. So the pit hag says, ooh, a bunch of people are dead. Let's turn my demon into a Poe, who always does this, because that go that choice matters, even though deaths are otherwise arbitrary. And just to clarify really quickly, right, the pit hag goes before the demon. So the pit hag makes the the pit hag makes the Poe and then the Poe gets a turn. Right? The Poe's tempo comes after the pit hag. So so the pit hag makes the demon and then that same night the Poe goes I'm good. We're gonna yeah, charge up. But this is a night that starts with say six players alive, which in like a seven player game can be night two. Yep. So like now, here's the storyteller's dilemma here. with Because this new Poe has been made, deaths are arbitrary. If the storyteller kills zero players and town executes tomorrow thinking they're safe, evil wins. If they kill one player... Town has, has a shot be, at the demon, but they don't know that the demon is But changed. if they... Yeah, like... A skip is evil wins. Like, if they miss, evil wins. What the storyteller really has to do there is probably this. Kill the pit hag, yeah. yeah. And two good players to let the good team know, this is hey, this day. is final day. Like, that's the only... Re that's like that's the de signal that needs to happen when the pit hag makes a poe with six, with six players live. And that's really um, jarring on six players alive and they can feel a lot kind of unfun it can feel like a yeah very like as we said on a unfair. seven player game this is this of course happened on happened this on night two night two yeah <clears throat> so you you wake you start the game you execute someone on day one on night two the storyteller arbitrary kills off half the remaining players and then it's final three on day two yeah so it's it it, it it's it's an interaction that is very powerful and probably if you're building your bag you really need to just not put pit hag in because pit hag can do this at any moment in the game and it, it it's always a threat of a pit hag. like it's just a demon and a minion that work particularly poorly together yeah. because of the pit hag's ability to accelerate the game using the poe in this manner effectively getting that triple kill without having to use the charge because the storyteller has to kill three players off that bit of demon change and the evil team doesn't have to sacrifice a charge to get there yeah i think that's i think that's pretty much covered it i mean it's 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 really it's really powerful and probably it's really balance. powerful yeah you know maybe like, innkeeper and mayor <laughs> do something but again it they have to be alive just they, innkeeper like mayor, yeah, just mayor doesn't do anything mayor just bounces to somebody else so you still end up in the same situation yeah yeah maybe soldier helps this to some extent but it's, it's still really rough soldier's not on the goon i guess helps but that's not yeah. really the right use of an outsider it's just it's, it's just really very hard. rough like yeah. it, it, it's a very rough combo is pit hag po. Uh, it's not so, to say again. I dislike the script. I just one of those two probably needs to leave because of the ability of the Poe Pit Hag 
to get a free triple kill off. If the demon, well, the demon's always alive, but if the pit egg's alive on a night that starts with six or fewer players, it's effectively like a triple kill because the pit egg forces the storyteller to set it down to find the clue. Yeah. I think, um, I, I think it's worth mentioning, since we've talked about a lot of scripts, uh, I think it is worth mentioning that almost every script probably has one character, uh, that, I, that I've seen at least in this competition, probably has one character that should be swapped out. Probably has one interaction that doesn't work. It's a hard competition. Almost every script, I just want to very clearly make this point. This is such a script. Uh, yep. These two characters. Hmm, this one looks really familiar, Emma. I think I've <laughs> yeah, seen this Yeah, this is before. Sex and Violence. These two characters play very poorly together. Um, like, if the Nodashi poisons the Phyla at the start of the game, and then it, it sort of, like, forces the demon not to move or become not a Nodashi because it makes it very obvious what happened when the Philo stops waking up, even though they thought they were the town crier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, this character and this character famously problematic. Yeah, those don't really work that great together. This character and well, everything famously problematic. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, but these, this is a, like, my dislike for the clockmaker side, this is a problematic interaction this is a problematic interaction we're gonna we're gonna go through all of them but tb because tb's perfect right (laughs) no like uh this character and this character don't actually play nicely with each other that's right um like the day one undertaker for the night one day one execution is the most important for the undertaker and the most like important for them socially and mechanically in the game and when it's a virgin proc it just sort of well there's the undertaker confirming the player's good sort of take it away from them they've already confirmed themselves as good can you put investigator you could put investigator and baron on yeah uh investigator turns baron into a townsfolk it just tells you that there's two confirmed good players because they're the outsiders yep so um like, every script has, except for, weirdly, I think this one. Like, I was brought up the script briefly because I'm like, I'm sure I remember something. But no. Mm. All these characters, these characters, these characters are so problematic with almost everything. But, like, it's it such before. a fine, <laughs> it, it, it's a house of cards it's where it should, cards. it should have collapsed several years ago. But somehow it manages to just... <sighs> here together into something beautiful but i mean everybody's played but then again right everybody's played the game of bmr that uh where the courtier hits the demon on night two and suddenly you've got a no kills game of bmr where the demon just has nothing that they can do you know and the evil team is desperate and scrambling and it's a devil's advocate and a mastermind and good just gets three days of free information to chase down you know, so yeah. it's 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 tricky. You know, <laughs> every script yeah. has something that doesn't work. Every script has something that doesn't work perfectly. You know, so just because we've mentioned an interaction and it's on your script, just because we've mentioned your script and said, "Ooh, this is a problematic interaction," doesn't mean we don't like it, and doesn't mean we don't appreciate you all submitting scripts. And uh... except specifically to Walter, <laughs> I would never play that script <laughs> unless you take the gossip off. <laughs> Wow, Walter, <laughs> she she coming for you, and you and you even and you even pandered to her by having a butler on your script. Wow, uh, he said some insulting things about the butler in his description, and he also had a gossip that had no business being there. That's that's pretty pretty reasonable. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, sorry for this one off format change. Uh, once again, this was brought us by oh. us being lazy and not prepared. <laughs> As we have more technical difficulties. Uh, if you don't like this alternative format, don't worry. It's probably never coming back. Uh, we're going to try uh, some you, different stuff in the future. because we If are you gonna run do out of like this alternative format, let us know and maybe it will come back. Yeah. Uh, next week, we'll be back to our normal format. We actually have a sort of cool two-week special series we're planning where we talk about what to do when 
not only are you playing as a certain character, but that character was just released by the Pandemonium Institute in the past week or so, and you don't know how it works. So we're going to do some episodes focusing on brand new characters. So stick around for hopefully the two weeks after this one comes out, because we're planning to produce two of these next week. Yeah. And so then we have a bank to go through the holidays. But, you know, we've mess, missed some weeks lately, so we may fail again. We're, we're anyway, going to try. Like, we're going to try not to keep failing. We're going to try to get ahead uh, 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 by a little bit. And we're hoping to be back to not missing weeks in the new year. Yeah. Obviously, the holidays, you know, will affect us. May affect us. But yeah. Uh, also, again, if you're really upset about this not being the normal format, it's just because we're lazy people, the normal format will be back. Yep, we'll be back to our <laughs> usual shenanigans of trying to trick each other with Grimms next week uh, with something should be fun and a little bit new. So until then, as always, may your scenarios be great.